Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Great morning, everybody. And gracious morning in Jesus' name. You seem to be coming alive and getting awake. When you were clapping, I was hearing, I thought, you know, some were sleeping, some were dozing, some were awake. Praise the Lord again. Father, I thank you this hour. We bless your name because you're still the same, forever the same. We're asking, O oh Lord, that today you impart the knowledge of the word to everyone in abundance in Jesus' name. Open our hearts, open our understanding, bring us out of the past and lead us, propel us into the future. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. When we come to a conference like this, we need to open our hearts so that what we hear, if it's different from what we knew before, you'll not throw it away and say, that's new. I never knew that before. I never saw that before. You know, if Enoch had had the same knowledge as all the other people in the land, no way he would have made the rapture. The rapture was not for him. The rapture was not for the people of that generation. It was a future thing that the Lord has reserved for the church, the militant church, the triumphant church, the sanctified holy church. And yet, before that time, of the promised rapture, that man walked with God like no other man had walked with God, and God took him. If God did that for him at that time, now this is the dispensation of the church. What can we have today? What can we receive today? Much more than what you have known. I told you I was going to be dealing with the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of God, the Acts of Christ, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. We dealt with A, and that A is authority of the Word for life and ministry. That's where we start. We hear the Word of salvation, the Word of grace, the word of his power, the word of righteousness, and then we come in. Into that word, we repent, we turn around, we confess our sins, we promise we are not going to go back to those sins anymore. We were saved, and the Spirit of God bore witness with our heart that we are now children of God. And from that time, we begin to take the milk of the world, the water of the world, the food of the world, the meat of the world, the honey in the world, the light of the world, shining in a way across a pathway. And then we begin to realize that the world is fire, that the world is hammer, that the world is a sword, and that the world will satisfy every need of our lives. Then I dealt with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and we dealt with the confirmation of the Spirit, confirmation of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in ministry. Now, when you are born again, the Spirit bears witness with your heart you're a child of God. Then it leads you to understand you've not got it all. Salvation is not all. There is still another step 
And if you have been led and guided and taught by the Holy Spirit, it will lead you to that experience of sanctification. I'm not sure anybody preached that to Enoch. I'm not sure somebody came to Enoch and said, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord in his walk with the Lord. He knew that. He didn't have to join a denomination called Deep and Life because that church, Deep and Life, was not there at the time of Enoch. And yet, without my interaction with him, I didn't even know him. I wasn't here then. He got the message from God himself. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. And that man yielding to the Spirit of God was sanctified, made holy, and purified. And he walked with God in that knowledge. And then God took him. Then after you are sanctified, the Spirit of God still continues to lead you. And he says, you have not got it all. He shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. Now, I made a statement during that message of the Holy Spirit. When I commented on Acts 10, 38, I said, as I read the word, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. And then I said, I asked you, how many Holy Ghosts do we have? And we responded, one. Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. And I said, the same Holy Ghost in Christ Think about that. That same Holy Ghost he has given to us today. No different, not lower, not degraded. The same Holy Ghost. And you might think in your heart, hmm, I read somewhere in John, and it says God gave him the Spirit without measure. And then you go back to what you always knew, that we cannot have the same Holy Ghost as Christ. Why not? Jesus himself said, He that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do. If you have a high-capacity generator, and it's able to service the whole field. If you change and you have a much lower capacity generator, it will not be able to service the whole field. For you to be able to service the whole field, you need the same capacity. And that's why Jesus said, He that believeth on me, the works I do, he will do. Why? Because I go to the Father. And then he said, greater works than these shall ye do. Because I go to the Father. Now, greater works. How can you do greater works with less power? He is Christ. The Father gave him the Spirit without measure. And then he gives you a lower, lower measure. He adds 100%. You have 2%. How can you do the same work and greater works? Actually, when you come to the Acts of the Apostles, you'll find out that those apostles, they believed. Not even that the Holy Ghost of them they knew that Christ was in them. Go through your New Testament. You will find in Christ, in Christ, and Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
And so you have the fullness of Christ in you. And then Jesus said, He that serves me, the Father will love him and honor him. And I and my Father will come into him and abide in him. Now, you have the Father, you have the Son, you have the Holy Spirit, and you are thinking, I cannot have the same Holy Spirit as Christ had. Why not? When Christ was on earth, the people that were healed, many of them, they brought them up from every city and every village that they might touch him. And as many as touched him were made whole, they were healed, everyone. <clears throat> they were healed, everyone. But look at Peter. They didn't even have to touch Peter. And as Peter was walking on the street, and a shadow of Peter came on them, not touching them, they not touching him. And it says they were healed. Everyone, I dare tell you, he had the Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost that Christ said, And if you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be open to you. Ask, it shall be given unto you. Amen? Amen. What I'm telling you is, I know you already have some knowledge. You already have some understanding. But when we come to the word of God, and we come to study. You say, Lord, show me what I never saw. Teach me what I never knew. And the Lord will take you from where you are. He'll take you higher. Take you up in Jesus' name. I want ministers, amen. amen. You know, the ministry is... Um, it's a tough ministry, a tough occupation. Many things happen here and there. Thank God for the testimony of that uh, young minister that said in the minister's conference after the prayer that he was relieved from depression. And I pray, you know, somebody can be depressed, the challenge here, pressure there, opposition there, difficulty there, challenges there, and a the man said, a little thing will shake him, jolt him. Sometimes he'll even cry, depression. Thank God for deliverance from depression. But you know, we ministers, we don't only face the challenge of depression, we face the challenge of deception. People coming and telling us things, showing us things that is just deception. And they make us run the fool's errand. They have deceived us and we didn't know. The Holy Ghost will take care of that. It's the one that will make you to understand what they tell you, everything they tell you. Somebody is there, somebody is there, somebody is there. It's not all true. Deception. The Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. Sometimes there is distraction. Distraction. You're plowing and you're going the straight way. And then something comes to bring distraction in your life. It's not only depression. Depression is there. Deception is there. Distraction is there. And the Lord will keep us standing and keep us focused so that that diversion will not destroy your ministry in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, we were even told that there's something called dementia. That means, you know, as people get older, they forget what they ought to remember. They remember what they ought to forget. They go back to the baby stage of life again. And we ministers, it is as we come like this, and the Lord ministers to us, Yes, depression gone. Dementia also taken away from your life in Jesus' name. And then there is disease, old age disease. This one is beating at you. That one is beating at you. But 
just like when you were younger. As you are getting older now, the stripes of Jesus will heal you completely in Jesus' name. Disease gone. I said disease gone. Uh, you know, the burden we have in ministry sometimes is the debt that comes upon us. We want to build this and build this. We borrow money from the bank and borrow money from members and borrow money from everywhere. And the debt now weighs you down. I pray all the provisions you need for life, all the provisions you need for family, all the provision you need for the ministry, the Lord supply in Jesus' name. Sometimes it's not just depression, it's defilement. Defilement. The pastor, the preacher, the professional, the director, the manager has too much privacy to himself. He counsels, he listens to some people, he gets intimate, he gets near the woman, and if it's a woman, gets near the man. And in these days of WhatsApp and telephone and social media and Zoom, you can even see the people you are talking to. And sometimes defilement comes. Not only depression, there's depression, yes. Then there's defilement. You know, uh, depression that somebody breaks down, crying, uh, when there's a little wind, a little problem, it, it can still reserve, you can still have a salvation and still have his holy life, only that his mind is weak. But he can still go to heaven if he dies. But defilement, that's a more serious problem. That if defilement comes in your life, in the life of any minister, if you die in that condition, that's dangerous. That's damnation. That's eternal suffering. You know, for other people, not just depression, domination. You know, everybody wants to control the man up there, the woman up there, so that he cannot say what we don't approve. And the domineering, they have such a bully figure that, you know, the pastor, if he yields to that, you know, the pastor fears uh, depression. I don't want to be depressed. Don't you fear domination? That another person will take over your life, dominate you, and... Not allow you to say what you ought to say. Domination. And when we come, as we come like this, we want to overcome in every area and live a life, a life of power, a life of authority. And when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, that's what it takes care of. It clears everything out of your life. I missed an amen there. You know, Sometimes in life, you have the vision, you have the strategy, you have the goal, you have the peak, you have where you want to get to, but you are deficient. Everything you ought to have, you're deficient in your health, you're deficient in your blood, you don't have the full blood running in your veins. Deficiency. And when you come to the Lord, I I'm telling you all this so that, you know, when we pray, you're not just praying for the same old request you have always had. Understand the challenge that comes before a minister. And then you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, I want to go higher. I want to rise higher. I want to soar higher. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagle. You will walk, you will not faint. You will run and you will not be tired. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. A, authority acts. C, confirmation. T, transformation and it's the transformation that comes through the name of Jesus. This morning, 
transformation through the name of Jesus for ministry. The name of Jesus in ministry. The name of Jesus that helps us to minister like our Messiah, our Master ministered. The Lord will give it to you. Amen. If you are not satisfied with where you have been, if you are not saying, I just came, I've read the book of Acts through and through many times, if you are not like that, you will say, Lord, show me, reveal to me, I want you to know, you will know. Amen. You will have. And you will perform. Am I talking to somebody there today? The Lord turn around your life, your ministry, and everything the Lord wants you to do. The Lord confirm in your life in Jesus' name. Now, the transformation through the name of Jesus for ministry. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 10. Acts, chapter 4, we're looking at verse 10. Be it known unto you, or unto you all, and to all the people of Israel. Ah, who was talking here? This is Peter. Transformation are taking place. That's the man that was fearful. That's the man that denied Christ just about 50 days earlier. But now, transformation had come from powerlessness to power. From uh, weakness unto strength. And from being ashamed unto being very vocal and very deliberate in what he said. Be it known unto you all. That and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, uh -uh, Peter, that's direct. You couldn't say that before, but Christ, by his resurrection, and the Holy Ghost had turned this lie around, and he could tell them now you crucified him. Whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you hold. Then in verse 11, it tells us, This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the hedge of the corner. Then in verse 12, it now tells us, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven, the name, the name, the name, that name held a conspicuous place in the Acts of the Apostles. It says there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In the name of Jesus and that name will work wonders in our lives in Jesus name Amen. the three points we're looking at today number one treasure in the name of Jesus for all men number two triumph for the name of Jesus while ministering number three transformation through the name of of Jesus by ministers. Let's come to number one. Number one, treasure in the name of Jesus for all men. Three things. Number one, salvation for all sinners. Number two, healing for all sick of all sicknesses. Number three, deliverance from evil spirit. All in the name of the name of Jesus. Let's look at number one. Number one, it tells us in Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name, on the name, on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look at chapter 4 again, verse 12. It says in verse 12, neither 
Is there salvation in any other? For there is none other name under heaven. In any country, in any continent, in any religion, there's none other name under heaven. Given among men whereby we must be saved. And then in Romans chapter 10, we're reading from verse 13. It says, for whosoever, whosoever here or there, whosoever in our country and in every other country, whosoever in our tribe and any other tribe, whosoever in our denomination and in all the other denominations, for whosoever shall come upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As we direct people to look up to Christ, not to us, as we direct our hearers to look up to Christ, not to our church, our denomination, as we tell others and we tell them salvation, free salvation, full salvation, transforming salvation, is salvation that converts the soul and changes the life as we direct them for that salvation we point them to Christ for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved look at number two here this is healing for all sickness and it's in the name in the name look at Acts chapter 3 verse 6 this man was born lame paralyzed and now at the age of 40 years and looking at him he's been there all the time can i remind you 40 years of age already and this is jerusalem the man had been there when christ was on earth in israel in jerusalem and jesus had been to that temple and Jesus had prophesied from that temple. But the man remained paralyzed. What if somebody had said, if Christ had walked this way before, and Christ had seen the man before, and the man was not healed. There's no connection between him and Christ. Maybe it's his destiny. Maybe it's his fate. Maybe that's what God wants for him. Peter did not think so. Peter just knew that the Holy Ghost has now come. And it makes the name of Jesus bright, beautiful, and powerful. And so Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Think about that. Silver and gold have I none. You know, one of the senior, senior ministers in a particular church so many years ago, he said, you know, we cannot talk like Peter anymore and say silver and gold, have I none? Look at the temple overlaid with gold. Look at the instrument overlaid with silver. And look at how rich the church is today. We can no more say silver and gold have I none. And the person he was talking to said, True, my Lord. Neither can we say in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up. And walk in the pursuit of silver and gold in the pursuit of material wealth the church has abandoned their faith in the name of Jesus that name of Jesus only comes now at the end of their prayer powerless prayer that name of Jesus only comes now in a few of their hymns that moves nobody but now here, when the name of Jesus, mighty and powerful, fresh in the hearts of the people, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, such as I have, you will have. Amen. You know, if there's no missionary committee supporting you, 
if there is no financial person aiding you and if there is no big man big power but long leg long hands great contact supporting you if you have the name of jesus you will go farther than the people that have silver and gold you'll go farther than the people that have the support of those missionary committees they're good but if that's all we have we don't have anything it says silver and gold have i known you know there are people in their churches they depend so much on people carrying bags and pulses around and they never never want to offend those people if i say something that my financier does not agree with then i'm done i'm gone if i say something that that rich man and business tycoon if i say something he does not agree with then i am finished true true you are finished you're finished because that's what you believe and it's unto you according to your faith but i say if there is no silver, if there is no gold, and I have the name of Jesus, nothing can finish me. Yeah. And if you have that name, the name above every name, the name that brings salvation, the name that brings healing, healing to everyone, and the name that brings deliverance, if you have that name, whatever else you don't have, you will succeed. I heard of somebody, a preacher. He was preaching and he was carried away by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. And he said, This, this, this. And then he branched off and he said, Anyone there that does not have this holiness of heart, holiness of life, you're just sitting there. If you die, you perish. He was so bold. And then, after the service of that day, somebody came to him in the church and said, what happened this morning, Pastor? How did you talk like that? If you continue talking like that, look at me. I will leave this church. And I can tell you other people, so and so, so and so, so and so, they will leave. And then that minister during the week, for a whole week, had time enough to think about it. And he came back the following Sunday. He said, Church, before I preach today, I want to tender my apology. For the things I said last Sunday. I saw that that turned some people off. Please, I bend and my heart is on bended knees. I'm sorry I spoke like that last week. Now, whatever the committee of deacons wants that will not rock the boat, I'm your preacher. I'm here by your appointment. I will do whatever you want. The man did not have the name of Jesus. Only the people that have the silver and the gold and the power and the authority, they were the people on whom he depended. We're here for this minister's conference so that if that backbone, like jellyfish, had been at your back, and you could not stand, and you are like a puppet for the rich people in the land to control your calling and your ministry. Today, you come out of that in Jesus' name. Now, it's not another fisherman that will give you fish in that river. Children, have you any meat there? No, Lord, throw your net there. We've toiled all the night, 
and we caught nothing. But at your word, we'll do, we'll do it. And they throw their net there. That name is powerful. And they caught, and they began to count. What a great catch they had. If you can bring your mind and your heart and your life and your ministry under the authority of the name of Jesus, all the needs of your life will be supplied in Jesus' name. Many years ago, in uh, our ministry, Deep Alive, there was somebody that had money. Of all the people I've seen in my short life at that time, he was the richest I'd ever come in contact with. I didn't say the richest in the country, the richest I have come in contact with. And he came to our office and he saw the secretary using the manual typewriter. And then on his own, he went and he bought an IBM machine. And that thing at that time, splendid. I had not seen that before at that time. But you know now things have changed. We have the computer, wherever it is before the computer uh, became so popular. And uh, so we started using his IBM typewriter. And it brought out our outlines and everything we did very well. Then I heard that he left his wife and got another. And I looked at the IBM machine. I said, now, stand straight. You're preaching this. And the man said, it doesn't go by preaching of the Bible. It goes by money. So I said, it should pack the IBM machine. And the container was still there. And all the accessories were there. Put everything inside and go carry and give to that man. And I said, tell him, if you don't accept the word, I don't accept your riches. And he came, and he was, uh, he was pleading, and he said, I got that thing for you before I kicked away my wife. And so I was still all right, when I bought that thing for you, I said, thank you, sir. I don't interpret the word of God like that. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And I said, carry your thing away. And you know, after that time, I don't know how it happened. IBM machines just came. And we had one there, had one in Lagos, had one in the state, had one at everywhere. And then uh, social media came. We had computer, we had, we had now more than one uh, IBM machine. If you keep that one on the basis of compromise, you will not have others following. But if you have the name of Jesus, I have the name of Jesus. Somebody there today, I have the name of Jesus. That name will carry you through. That name will do everything there is to be done in your life, in your family, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Look at verse 7. And they were told in verse 7. And he took him by the right hand. And he lifted him up. And immediately, somebody help me shout immediately. And immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Look at verse 16 there. Verse 16 tells us, and his name. That's the authority of the New Testament of the Acts of the Apostles. That's the power. That's the miracle worker. In the Acts of the Apostles, it's the name. And his name, through faith, in his name has made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith 
which is by him have given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That name will work in your ministry. Yes. Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 17. Mark 16, reading from verse 17. The sign shall follow them that believe. Any believer there? Yes. You believe for salvation. Any believer there? Yes. You believe for sanctification. Any believer still there? Yes. You believe in the supernatural. Any believer still there? Yes. You believe in the supply that comes from the hand of God and from heaven. Any believer still there? Yes. You believe in the supernatural support that the Lord will give you. You know, somebody might walk away on you and say, you have become too serious since you went for that conference. And now you are a man of the world, a woman on the world. And in your ministry, he wants to walk out on you. You know, sometimes we have deep feelings because of the intimacy we have, the interaction we have with somebody. And when somebody walks out on you like that in the church, you feel there's a great loss. But if, you, if they want to go, let them go. And you stick to the word of God. And then you say, I'm a believer in supernatural supply. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, are you there? You'll begin to do it. In my name, they'll cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Verse 18, it says in verse 18, And they shall take up serpents, they'll throw them away. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay their hands on the sick. And they shall recover now you need to understand the ministry of healing they shall lay their hands on the sick one way in james chapter 5 if any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord the anointing with oil will not do anything but the name Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the Lord shall save the seed. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another that she may be healed. The effectual prayer of a father, of a righteous man, a billet more. That's another method. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. That's another method. He sent the word and healed them and delivered them from all their afflictions. That's another method. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. And he came, she came and touched his garment. That's another method. And God worked special miracles by Paul the Apostle and handkerchiefs and aprons were taken out of his body and it was taken far away to the people that were demon-possessed and as the handkerchiefs and the aprons touched them, they were healed and delivered. That's another method. You know, you have to understand that there's this method, there's this method, but the bottom line is you believe in the name of Jesus. Wonderful things will happen through you in Jesus. Name. I'm coming to number three now. Number three is deliverance from evil spirit. Deliverance from evil spirit. Now, we need to understand deliverance. Some people have made a major, major thing out of a minor thing. And you see, this is my ministry. The ministry of deliverance. And they go about looking for people 
who are possessed or whatever and you see a preacher and uh, they say I see a demon there and there you accepted you have demon talk now and they come maybe you it's a prayer partner and then you're experiencing uh, some issues in your family and it's just lack of good communication between the husband and the wife. He talks and she talks. And she tells the children, go this way. And the husband said, children, come back. Don't listen to her. And that brings problem in the family. It's just an issue of spending money. That the man got all the salary. And he's taking care of my uh, mother, grandma, grandpa, all the relatives, everybody. When he comes back home, salary does not remain. And the wife needs money for essential things. All the money is gone. That's what is causing the problem in that family. And sometimes it is, uh, you know, just misunderstanding each other or minor non-essential things that every, anybody could have overlooked and they make a great point a mountain out of a molehill that's why they're having problems but somebody comes to them and he says yes 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 that problem in your family can i tell you will you accept your wife is possessed she needs deliverance but my wife is born again. Doesn't matter. Your wife needs deliverance. And then she carries the wife. Number one, you couldn't deliver your wife yourself. You're sleeping together on the same bed and your body touching her body could not drive that evil spirit away. There's something wrong with you there. Look at Dagon. Look at Dagon. Dagon was there. And then they brought the ark of the Lord. No priest. No Israelite. Just that ark of the Lord. The following morning, when those people, when they woke up, their Dagon was falling to the ground. That's power. From that ark. And then they set up that Dagon again. And the following morning, no priest, no deliverance prayer, nothing but the presence of the ark there. The head of Dagon was cut off. The head of that demon must go off. The brain of that demon must be blown off. And then they abandoned that Dagon. Now, if you have Christ, if you have the Holy Spirit, if you have the Word of God abiding in you, I thought you cast out devils outside in the, you know, when you go for all these uh, meetings, as you come back home, why is the power dormant at home? The power will rise up like a giant in your family. Yeah. And you don't have to carry your wife to a deliverance minister, cast out devils for me, cast out devils for me. And then uh, sometimes it's the wife that goes to maybe a uh, night vigil somewhere and everybody is lining up. And the minister there is anointing them with oil, laying hands on them uh, and they are falling to the ground. And uh, so the wife of a beloved pastor, he comes now to on the line. And before they anoint her with oil, uh, they say, oh, what's, what's your problem? Well, I'm a wife of a minister, but my husband is demon-possessed. Ah, you go to confess that kind of confession outside in a night vigil. And then they say, okay, what do you want? I want, uh, you know, the devil to go out of my husband. They say, okay, they'll do deliverance for him by proxy. 
they'll do the deliverance there now then it will affect him at home and you're so happy and excited and then you shake shake and shake and as you see other people falling down you fall down <laughs> why for pastor and then after that you go back home and your husband said where have you been where did you send me don't have liberty to go anywhere argument starts again what you thought was demon is disagreement come together answer the question where have you been i went to such and such a place what happened there i regret it now confess and say i'm sorry that humility that confession that yieldedness will solve the problem in the family as you are here today and the name of jesus will be effective in your life no demon will be active in your life anymore in jesus name because it says in mark chapter 16 verse 18 they laid their hands on the sea and they recover. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word or signs following. There will be confirmation in your ministry from now on in Jesus' name. Look at Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. The name of Jesus is above every name of any man. Every name of every sickness, every name of any spirit, God has given him a name which is above every name. Verse 10, it says in verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, what will happen? Every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on the earth and things under the earth then in verse 11 and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father let's come to point number two now point number two triumph for the name of Jesus while ministering. Look at Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 12. Triumph. You'll be triumphant. Amen, Amen is too low. Yeah. As you minister, while ministering, you're ministering the word in the power of the Spirit by the name of jesus and it says neither is there salvation in any other neither is there deliverance in any other neither is there redemption in any other neither is there eternal life in any other neither is there, is there conversion and transformation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Three things. Number one, steadfastness or steadfast commitment to the name of Jesus. Number two, sustained courage for the name of of Jesus. And number three, serene, peaceful, 
Conscience nurtured by Jesus. Number one. Steadfast commitment to the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 4. We're reading from verse 17. Acts chapter 4. Reading from verse 17. But that is spread no further among the people. Let us strictly threaten them, charge them, command them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name, even though Sadim is new, that the sin behind their success, the spread of the gospel, the manifestation of power, they knew it was the name of Jesus. Let's threaten them, challenge them, command them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name, verse 18. And he called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. The name, that's the important thing. Whatever you have, you must have that name. Whatever you don't have, you must have that name. Then in verse 19, but Peter and John and such and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you, more than unto God, judge ye. Then in verse 20, they said, But for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. That commitment to the name of Jesus in the way you live, in the things you do, in the life you conduct, in the character you manifest, in the thoughts you have, in the project program you have, in the path that you follow. Everything from prayer to preaching to the practical area of your life must be based on the name of Jesus and it must be what glorifies the name of the Lord and you have that steadfast commitment to the name of Jesus look at number two there number two there sustains courage for the name of Jesus sustain courage you know and sometimes you can have courage for a moment a fleeting minute you have courage and then after that minute everything goes down like bushfire that you don't have the courage anymore but you know the courage of yesterday will not suffice for today the courage of last month will not suffice today and the courage of your early years of the Christian faith will not suffice for today. What if I told you that in my earlier years of conversion, I was converted in the school of an atheist. Everybody knows the story. And I took my stand for the name of the Lord. Now, those years, 1964, 65, up to 72, when I now taught in that school, the courage of that time to carry on my conviction at that time. What if that's all the courage I have? And now I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, I'm a superintendent, and now no courage anymore. The little, little rats can threaten me. And the little puny people that have no power, they can't stop my mouth, muscle my mouth. And the people I don't even know, unnamed people, 
I don't see their face, but they can't threaten me. And I cannot be afraid of people I don't even know, I don't even see. And people that are not as equipped as I am. And then I've lost the courage now. My hands hang down. My shoulders are down. And then I have what they call depression. A little thing. Why are you doing that? How can that happen? Allow me. Nobody will allow you, but the name of Jesus will allow you. It's the name. It's the name. It's the power in the name. And then your courage in the Lord, your courage for the name of Christ is sustained. I pray every day, every week, 